this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to speak about the tonnage, tonnage convention, tonnage measurement, etc. But before that, let's take a peep into the history and let us see how these terms originated, how they were used in the yester years. First, we will talk about a period from 1650 to 1849, nearly 200 years. There was a system called BOM. That is Builder's Old Measurement System. Now this system used uh, to find the cargo capacity, cargo carrying capacity of a ship by the dimensions that is length, breadth, etc. So if I, I draw a picture just to explain this concept, right? Suppose this is the length of the vessel. Let's say the length is 500 meters, uh, 500 feet. And let us say that the breadth of the vessel is 70 feet. And let's say the draft is about 30 feet. Now, if we leave this portion, which is 30% of the breadth over here, and we also leave this portion, that is 30% of the breadth here, the total deduction from the length is 60% of the breadth. So what we say is, uh, we consider the effective length to be length minus 60% of the breadth, right? We assume that there is a rectangle of this length, that is length minus 60% of the breadth. Of course, you multiply this with the breadth and let us assume that the draft is half of the breadth, right? So, uh, uh, so the draft would be uh, 35 feet and this figure I will divide by 94. So this approximated to the cargo carrying capacity. So let us look at it, length minus 60% of the breadth. 60% of the breadth means 42 and uh, 500 minus 42. 500 minus 42. That is 458 multiplied by breadth 70 multiplied by the draft that is half of the breadth that is 35 equal to divided by 94. 11 937 approximately 11 937 ton ton so this was a term associated with the ship with this dimensions 11 937 tons so this was called builders old measurement system right like around the same time there was another method of calculation that used to be called Thames shipbuilder measurement method and by this method, the displacement used to be found like this. That is length into breadth into uh, draft into block coefficient divided by 35. Used to be displacement. And 60% of displacement is equal to dead weight. So let us see for the same dimensions that we used, that is uh, 500 as the ship's length multiplied by 70, multiplied by 35. And let's say, let's take the block coefficient as 0 0.68 and the whole thing divided by 35. Let's see. 500 into 70 into 35 into point. Uh, 6 8 equal to divided by 35 so displacement I'm getting is 23,800 23,800 the displacement and what is 60 percent of this 0. 0.6 gives me 14,280 So different methods gave different results as uh, far as the carrying capacity is concerned. There was another method that is length into breadth square divided by 188 giving you dead weight. 
So let me see uh, 500 once again into 70 into 70 equals divide by 188 gives me 13032 13032 so different empirical formulae giving different results and on the basis of these figures they are going to calculate the charges that will be levied on the ship so don't you think there should be uniformity in the method of calculation dead weight which is calculated on the basis of dimensions of the ship probably was not uh, a, a good criteria to decide what are the charges to be levied on the ship. So they thought that uh, they should charge the ship on the basis of the freight earning space or capability of the ship. So what they did in 1849. So in 1849 in UK they appointed a commission to resolve this problem. You know they appointed uh, Admiral George Moorsom. Admiral George Moorsom as the secretary of this commission. What he decided and what he thought that the fees that is levied on the ship, charged on the ship, should be proportional to the freight earning space or freight earning capability of the ship. The result was the Moorsom system of measurement. How, what are the rules in respect of measurement of internal space of the ship? GRT for example was a measure of the total internal capacity of the ship consisting of under deck volume excluding double bottom then volume of twin deck spaces volume of superstructure volume of deck houses etc exemptions included navigational space galley stairways light and air spaces the total volume in cubic feet was divided by 100 and that would give the grt of the vessel gross registered tonnage of the vessel and this is the GRT that was entered in the certificate of registry. Net registered tonnage was then obtained after deducting the space that is used for machinery allowed for machinery and the space that would not be earning revenue for the ship. Net registered tonnage was a measure of capacity available for the carriage of cargo and passengers. Deductions from GRT included master and crew accommodation, safety and storage spaces, water ballast tanks, allowance for propelling machinery. And then the resulting volume in cubic feet, resulting volume in cubic feet was divided by 100 to get NRT and this was the figure that was entered in ships register modified tonnage and alternative tonnage now this tonnage mark what is this tonnage mark till very recent now of course it is obsolete used to find this kind of mark you know tonnage mark was placed on the ship's side at a tabulated distance below the level of second deck this was to save on dues while the ship did not submerge enough to keep the tonnage mark above the water level so the need of a new uniform and universal system was very strongly felt by everybody right so imo caused this new system to be born by adoption in 1969 a new convention right a tonnage convention now this new system new convention came into force on 18th july 1982 with a grace period of 12 years all the countries they were given the 12 years grace period keeping in mind the economic concerns which were which would be caused because of this change moreover they had this new system in such a way they uh, devised the system in such a way that uh, not too much of difference will be felt compared to the existing system but there would be uniformity in calculation right and all those ships which were built before this date that is 18th july 1982 they were given 12 years of grace period so what were the implications of this new convention number one uniformity and the terms like gross registered tonnage will not be used anymore instead of gross registered tonnage grt nrt the terms that will be used will be gross tonnage and net tonnage and this would be a figure rather than the weight right so you may say that there is no unit you have a figure called gross tonnage and you have a figure called net tonnage Gross tonnage forms the basis for the regulations in respect of manning, safety and registration fees. 
gross as well as net tonnage form the basis of the port dues. Gross tonnage is function of molded volume of all enclosed spaces on the ship, whereas net tonnage is the function of molded volume of all the cargo spaces on the ship. Now under the new system, enclosed spaces are all those spaces which are bounded by the ship's hull, by fixed or portable partitions or bulkheads, by decks or covering other than permanent or movable awnings and no break in the deck nor any opening in the ship's hull, in the deck or in any covering of a space or in partitions or bulkheads of a space nor the absence of a partition or bulkhead shall preclude a space from being included in the enclosed space. If I have slot or uh, you know something like cargo port on the ship side, I cannot say that the space that it feeds to is not an enclosed space. If I have slot in the deck head, if I have uh, opening in the deck or if I have opening in the bulkhead, even if it is a movable bulkhead, I cannot say that because there is opening, this is not an uh, enclosed space, it will be considered as enclosed. Now in my next video, we will see how the calculation is done for gross tonnage and net tonnage. We will see different examples and from examples we will see what kind of spaces can be exempted. So they are called excluded spaces. What are the rules in respect of deciding what place is excluded? So let us say if there is a plan view of the ship and let us say there is a space over here which should be considered as enclosed space but suppose a portion of it is to be considered as excluded it will not be considered in calculation of enclosed space so so called excluded space will not be considered as excluded or it will not be excluded if you have made some arrangement to load secure uh, the cargo you have some kind of racks or you have some kind of closing arrangement so that you can close that compartment carry the cargo you know then you cannot call that space as excluded space that would be considered as enclosed space we will see that in my next video and we will do the calculation final calculation to find out what is gross tonnage and what is net tonnage see you in the next video